So you have that money saved up to buy a brand new phone, but you can't quite justify the purchase. Stop there and watch this. You may be a little bit surprised as to what kind of phone you can buy with your money and what kind of phone you can get for that, as long as you don't mind it being a slightly older device. Hey guys, this is Ryan Thomas here with Failtech, and here's my review of the Galaxy S4 from Samsung a little over three years late. The build quality of Samsung devices from yesteryear are definitely somewhat questionable for the amount of money you were paying back then, but for the 90 to 130 pound mark that you'll be paying for one of these, you're actually getting a decently made phone, albeit incredibly plasticky. You're not getting 1M8 or iPhone quality in terms of the build, but you are getting uh, some plastic. A Gorilla Glass 3 coated 5 inch 1080p AMOLED display, shiny plastic rails with volume buttons on the left, power button on the right, headphone jack on the top, micro B board on the bottom and a 13 megapixel camera, flash, and not fantastic rear firing speaker on the back. You're getting a fantastic screen for your money. With a 5 inch 1080p Super AMOLED panel that screams quality, the 441 PPI is nothing to scoff at either. It's typically a saturated Samsung screen with brilliant blacks and lots of poppy color, and it's a great screen for just content consumption, outdoor use, or any day phoniness. I love this screen, it's fantastic. You're not getting a terrible camera either. With a 13 megapixel sensor and f2.2 aperture, the ability to shoot video at 30 fps too, at 1080p. The camera isn't the best in the world, but it was never going to be. It's good enough, and you're getting enough clarity. There's not much else to mention apart from the 2 megapixel front facing camera that can shoot the same 1080p at 30 fps, but it's not quite the same in terms of the quality. Performance is good, but not the best thing in the world. This device actually features a surprisingly underwhelming Snapdragon 600 uh, with 2GB of RAM and it's also limited to 4.4.2 by default which I think is probably to do with the Snapdragon 600. But you can actually root this device and if you want to risk breaking your phone because of the Knox Samsung system, shout out to my college mate Seb by the way, he bricked his S6 Edge due to this exact problem when he's tried to install a custom ROM. But the TouchWiz experience isn't quite on the same level as my S7 Edge running 6.0. 0.1, but it was also four times the price of the S4. Everyday use is good, with little to no hiccups, and games are a decent experience too. But just don't expect anything amazing, you'll want to jump to the S5 for a better experience. Battery life on this phone is one I can hardly comment on, due to the fact that when my device was purchased, I purchased it used and it came with a 5200mAh extended battery with a back. But you'll be getting exactly half of that with a standard unit, 2600mAh in the thankfully removable and upgradable form. Due to my experience with both the S3 and the S5, I'd have to guess that a full day would be a little bit much for the poor S4 stock battery to handle on medium to high usage days on stock software, but if you're ballsy enough to try and put a custom ROM on your phone, then who knows. The speaker isn't amazing, but it's there. I would have preferred a front firing or even bottom firing setup, but you can't have everything for this price. Other things to note are that in certain markets, these phones were capable of wireless charging out the box, which is extremely impressive for a phone that's over three years old. <coughs> Apple, get your shit together, bro. It also gets a little bit toasty when it's under heavy load, but I guess that's normal. The home button is a little bit skinny too. I mean, it's not very tool and can be a little bit hard to press without being used to it and there's also micro SD expansion under the removable back cover which is fantastic. And a final thing to note would be that you can actually get this in the Exynos octa-core form which means that the system on the chip is also developed by Samsung instead of Snapdragon. Just something to look out for there. But overall what do I think of the device? Well, if you're going to be buying this for about £100, I would definitely recommend you pick up an anchor battery back. With that extra back, it's kind of an accessory type deal that you want to be paying about £30 for. Now, £30 might sound a lot because that is in fact worth about a third of the device, but if it means your battery's going to last all day, no problem, and then I don't really see why it's that bad of an investment. I actually think it's pretty cool. Either way, I'm going to leave this with you guys. I think it's a great phone. I think the battery may be a little bit of a problem in stock. And if you're really that good and you're really that ballsy enough to think I'm risking bricking my phone to put a custom ROM, then definitely do that too. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Like if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Tell me in the comments why if you disliked it or liked it or whatever. And let me know what you think or maybe you want to see your phone on a, in a video or something or whatever. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you later. Peace.